So today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to the iconic pulsar known as Vela. The neutron star located somewhere right here in the Vela supernova remnant produced approximately 11,000 years ago as a result of a type 2 supernova when basically a red giant star explodes leaving a neutron star behind. But because this happened during human prehistory and it was also about 800 light years away from us, it's extremely unlikely that anyone wrote down anything about it, it's also extremely unlikely that anyone even noticed it, although obviously possible, and more importantly, it's unlikely that this had any effect on planet Earth. But we know it's there. As a matter of fact, here are the actual gamma rays emitted by this pulsar, even right now as I'm making this video. And this pulsar is also iconic for this beautiful observation from the Chandra Observatory of essentially what we refer to as the Pulsar Wind Nebula. A very beautiful nebula produced by the interaction of the pulsar and its very powerful magnetic fields with a lot of different material present in this area. But because this is such a well-known pulsar and also because it's relatively powerful, it's also one of the most studied objects in the entire night skies and is one of the most prominent gamma ray sources visible to various telescopes. Some of the most powerful sources are actually all pulsars or very powerful blazers that in theory can produce even more energy even though they're much much farther away. And over the years quite a lot of things have been learned about this because this is basically the most studied neutron star out there. For example, we know that it spins 11 times per second and it's also the brightest persistent object producing gamma rays, but it's also a pulsar that seems to glitch quite a lot. In astronomy when it comes to pulsars or neutron stars, glitches refer to unusual shifts in their pulsation that sometimes can be compared to, for example, some kind of a earthquake, or I guess a starquake happening on the surface of the star, which usually produces extremely tiny deviations in pulsations visible from a lot of different pulsars out there. So this is a phenomenon that definitely happens quite a lot, but in Vela Pulsar, it seems to happen just a little bit more often than anywhere else. It's not entirely clear why, but that's just how things are. But I guess more importantly, this is also one of those pulsars known to produce very very powerful emissions, serving as a source of some of the most powerful energy in the entire galaxy. And so it's always been kind of curious to a lot of scientists how exactly does all of this work. And for the most part, it was believed to be understood pretty well. It was basically a result of the interaction of the magnetic field with a lot of powerful particles produced by the pulsar. But turns out that things are maybe not as we thought. Because extremely recently, scientists detected something nobody has ever expected to find coming from this pulsar. Gamma rays that were so powerful, they were completely impossible to explain. And all of this detected extremely recently. And described in detail in the study you can find in the description below. And so what exactly is happening here? And what do scientists think going on? I guess, first though, how exactly did they even find this? And by itself, this is actually really fascinating. In order to see these very powerful emissions coming from various locations, and so here we're talking about gamma rays, for example, scientists employ these very, very unusual telescopes, referred to as Cherenkov telescopes, whose only goal is to detect tiny variations in luminosity in the upper atmosphere of planet Earth. And Cherenkov radiation is the phenomenon that essentially makes nuclear reactors glow with this unusual light which by itself is produced as a result of particles moving much faster than they should be moving through this particular medium. And so when certain types of radiation or certain types of particles move extremely fast through the upper atmosphere, they also end up producing Cherenkov radiation for just a tiny fraction of a second. And this is exactly what these telescopes are able to see. Any gamma rays with certain power, specifically 1 tera electron volt, will always produce Cherenkov radiation in the upper atmosphere and will always be detectable. And so this beautiful telescope known as HESS, located in Namibia, has been exceptionally good at detecting these powerful gamma rays coming from various locations. But most neutron stars, or actually all neutron stars known to us, don't generally produce these types of emissions, they're not powerful enough. Things like blazers definitely do, but here we're talking about supermassive black holes. Neutron stars normally do not produce very high energy gamma rays expected to produce Cherenkov radiation. Just to give you a comparison, anything over 1 tera electron volts, in terms of actual energy, to some extent is equivalent to a flying mosquito. Except that here we're talking about a tiny tiny particle, or in a lot of cases, just a single photon. So these are really powerful emissions. But at some point, once you reach approximately 10 tera electron volts, it even makes nitrogen in the upper atmosphere fluoresce, producing even different types of emissions. 
which is what many of these telescopes have been discovering in the last few years. But in most cases, the sources of these particular emissions are sort of difficult to pinpoint, they will normally end up being some kind of really powerful events such as ridiculously powerful gamma ray bursts, or in most cases, blazers, powerful supermassive black holes. These events, by the way, are kind of rare. Yet, turns out, very recently, that's exactly what the science has discovered coming from Vela Pulsar. Ridiculously powerful gamma rays, approximately 20 tera electron volts in power, detected coming directly from this location. Something we've never seen coming from a neutron star, and something that technically has never been seen coming from the Milky Way at all, making these the most powerful emissions coming from any source in the vicinity of planet Earth. With the amount of energy detected so far basically equivalent to a single photon with the energy of a small ball hitting the floor. That is an insane amount of energy for a single photon. And at the moment, there is no good explanation to what's going on here. Now we know that pulsars and neutron stars in general have very powerful magnetic fields, and so when charged particles are stuck inside these fields, they can actually be accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light, which very often makes them produce all sorts of light, including of course gamma rays. But in this case, the amount of gamma rays produced is just more intense than any theory ever predicted. It's really basically impossible to explain how any of this is achieved by this neutron star. And so I guess one explanation is that maybe this particular pulsar just has a much more intense magnetic field with an unusual shape such as a much wider cone, which essentially accelerates charged particles even more by having them move in a much wider circle. But even this by itself just cannot explain what's going on here. The gamma rays detected in this case are just way too powerful. This is really only something we expect from a supermassive black hole that possesses a lot more power. Not a neutron star, not a typical pulsar. With the additional explanation suggesting that, well maybe, it's a combination of very powerful magnetic fields with some kind of an effect from the stellar wind that's present around the pulsar. Here we know that for example materials from the previous explosion, that of course happened 11,000 years ago, is still moving really fast at approximately 1200 kilometers per second. And so maybe the supernova itself in this case was just much more powerful and produced some kind of an unusual geometry that allows certain particles to accelerate to much 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 higher velocities. And so some of these high energy electrons moving around the pulsar can sometimes interact with photons nearby, dramatically increasing their energy, turning them into gamma rays. Although the overall conclusion from the paper so far is that nobody knows. And we're probably not going to know for quite some time because these are absolutely unexpected and do not match any current theory. But we might get some answers from a slightly different location that the scientists have been recently studying even more. And here we're talking about the location of the nearest supernova in the last few decades, SN1987a, the supernova that happened in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, and the supernova that we're still able to see evolve even after several decades. This is at a distance of about 165,000 light years away from us, and it was essentially a result of a blue supergiant star collapsing, creating a supernova, and very likely leaving a remnant behind. In the process, creating some of the most beautiful images we've ever been able to capture of any supernova anywhere. But interestingly, the first thing that we actually saw when the supernova happened was not the light, but the arrival of neutrinos as an unusual 12 second burst coming from the direction of this galaxy. And it was actually hours later that we finally saw some of the first light. And though the expansion of the supernova, as well as the shell itself, has been very thoroughly studied in the last few decades, up until recently, the internal structure, or basically the inner region of the shell, for the most part remained completely mysterious. Actually, the scientists even didn't know if there was any remnant left behind. Based on the mass of the star, it was expected to produce at least some kind of a neutron star, but there was just no evidence of anything up until recently. Some of the first evidence started to emerge a few years ago, when initial observations by various telescopes including ALMA detected huge amounts of gas in the middle that was basically swirled by something. And there was really no way to explain this except for some kind of a massive compact object in the middle, basically creating what seems to be a pulsar nebula. Very similar to a typical pulsar wind nebula we've seen so many times before. But this was just the first sign. The most recent observations and most recent signs came from the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. Here the observations revealed something else we've never seen before, only visible with the infrared light. Unusual crescent-like formations 
that seem to be carved by very powerful magnetic fields. And in this case, it's extremely difficult to explain this unless there was a powerful neutron star right in the middle. And so these observations from just a few weeks ago more or less unofficially confirmed that this is a pulsar being formed right now. And basically being formed right in front of our eyes. And so in that sense, this is actually a perfect opportunity to try to understand how these objects form, what exactly happens to neutron stars to create a pulsar, and why so many of them turn out to be a little bit different. Or I guess, more specifically, when it comes to the Vela pulsar, how some of them are able to produce ridiculously powerful emissions, something that nobody has ever expected. And so by studying the iconic SN1987A, we might have some of the first answers in the next few months. But I guess until then, whatever is happening to Vela is still going to remain a mystery for at least some time. We will definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some new discoveries or some new revelations. Until then, check out previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.